A short while ago, I had an interesting conversation with Matt Powers, the permaculture student, on his video entitled John Kempf on the Amazing and Incredible Truth about Dark Septate Endophytes, Regenerative Soil. Centering around the nature of dark septate endophytes and whether they are able to radiosynthesize or harvest radiating energy, in this case using melanin compounds to sequester carbon. My last video about this subject was copyright struck by James Powers, perhaps not Matt Powers specifically, but somebody working on his behalf. Regardless, you'll see that this video is actually mostly the last video, but with the contentious video being removed so as to avoid any sort of copyright infringement because it is not my intent to hurt somebody in the case of copyright. So if they wanted that video to remain fully on their channel, I think that's totally valid. But the criticisms that I make here about human photosynthesis and melanin facilitated radiosynthesis are still important and I think valuable in the regenerative agriculture space. I was generally surprised that this had happened in the first place. I hadn't been contacted and I already am aware that the conversation itself that I had in the comments section was probably not palatable and so I suppose I'm not totally surprised that this had happened. Regardless, I hope that you enjoy the rest of this video and the interesting research that has come about this cool conversation with Matt Powers about the claims that John Kempf makes. Originally, when my original video was produced, that video had been taken down, and so access to the video had become very limited or impossible. At this time, however, the video is still up. The comments aren't that I'm talking about in this video, however, the video can be accessed and I encourage people to take a look at it and then take a look at some of the research that I propose in this video that sort of contradicts some of the claims being made and asking for further research. This was surprising to me because dark septate endophytes have been studied for decades and most of the current literature about them still defines them poorly within taxonomic and ecological frameworks. Proposed as a theoretical process akin to photosynthesis in the mid-1900s, radiosynthesis of radio, micro, and even gamma radiation to sequester carbon like plants do to make sugars would fundamentally change our perspective of autotrophs and many ecological dynamics if it were confirmed. I have also followed the research about Cryptococcus neoformans populations in the Chernobyl reactor that has been documented growing under these high energy conditions since I first learned about it in high school. Radiosynthesis via melanin has been a proposed factor in this fungus and other fungi that have increased in growth due to radiation exposure experiments and some circumstantial evidence showing melanin's ability to transduce current via redox reactions. Even in research that has come out in 2021, this has so far not been proven to be the case, so I was immediately and immensely curious and asked Matt Powers if he had any examples showing melanin being used to create adenosine triphosphate or sequester carbon. He writes in the comments that there are tons of examples and mentioned a concept called human photosynthesis asserting that melanin acts like chlorophyll for humans that I should search for online. I was aware that many animals can synthesize vitamin D3 through exposure to ultraviolet radiation, so I thought it might be a process like this. Matt directly references a paper called The Role of Human Photosynthesis in Predictive, Preventative, and Personalized Medicine by Sergei Sukov and Arturo Solis Herrera, associated with the Human Photosynthesis Study Center, published by the Low Impact Factor Journal, the European Association for Predictive, Preventive, and Personalized Medicine, where some bizarre statements were made about how, if glucose were important for energy, diabetics would be able to fly, among other odd sentences. Curious about the center, I came across work by the Human Photosynthesis Study Center associated with papers written in the worst prose I had ever encountered, supported by an infamous predatory publisher called Omics Publishing Group. This was disconcerting to me 
having myself read research that was not peer-reviewed, not realizing that its veracity or legitimacy was dubious. I also came across an Integrity Science article by Dr. Elizabeth Bick scrutinizing the research and the Associated Center. I already knew of Dr. Bick's reputation for investigating improper research conduct, so I cordially communicated to Matt that this research is contentious at the very least, doesn't support the topics at hand, and that as a kindred proponent of regenerative agriculture, we should be wary of these claims. A few hours later, I was sharing this discussion with a colleague that might be more familiar with dark septate fungi, and I noticed that my comments were not visible to other accounts, and I asked Matt if I had become restricted. I didn't receive a written response, but the video became unlisted and difficult to access soon after. Although the circumstances after this correction were bizarre, I felt like the conversation might be a good opportunity to talk about the current research surrounding the poorly understood dark septate endophytes, fungal melanin's evidence interactions with radiation, and whether some of the claims of the original video make sense in the context of regenerative agriculture and the associated science. In brief, Endophytes are microbial organisms like bacteria and fungi that live inside the bodies of plants, and often there is the additional connotation that the organism doesn't elicit disease symptoms in the plant. Endophytes are hard to study because separating them from their hosts can be extremely difficult or impossible, both physically as well as through certain genetic sequencing technology, but their natural presence is commonplace. Many microbes are faculative endophytes, meaning that they can switch to this lifestyle when compatible conditions are met, like a host with the right immune system and host genes with which to interface and colonize the plant tissue. Some microbes have generalized compatibility, and others are much more specialized. While some endophytes can be parasitic or mutualistic, and even switch between that continuum, The mutualists are notable for having effects like modulating the regulation of certain genes, hormone production affecting growth, abiotic stress, and even constantly priming the immune system just by their presence as a foreign agent. Dark septate endophytes are specifically fungi that interact with plants usually through the root tissue as well as integrating with mycorrhizal tissue in some cases. Their cells are dark with melanin compounds like eumelanin and dihydroxynaphthalene, at least in the case of fungi, and they are ubiquitously found in the environment. Matt Powers mentioned dark septate endophytes in the Chernobyl reactors growing on gamma radiation, but he didn't provide, nor was I able to find, any literature referring to any particular species that had been called a dark septate endophyte specifically. Though mainly known as an animal and human pathogen, Cryptococcus neoformans, along with other species in the same genus, is one of the most common fungi cited in this meltdown reactor and experimented within that context. It is also known to colonize and parasitize some tree species, switching from parasitic to saprobic lifestyles readily. Interestingly, there are populations of this species that produce melanin and those that lack it, but growth increases in some studies were not specifically associated with melanin, but with the suppression of genes involved in cell growth and respiration and upregulation of genes related to DNA replication, repair, and cell division as a generalized response to a stressful environment like the exposure to gamma radiation. Melanin has been shown to be damaging to fungal cells in some studies, and even sensitize them to radiation. Inconsistencies from various experiments have been attributed to contextual factors like cellular age, melanin precursor levels, and radiation exposure. Melanin is produced by many organisms, and is often associated with stress response in an assortment of contexts. In fact, all kingdoms of life produce melanin. Some insects melanize in response to pathogen colonization, and even gregarious grouping of conspecifics nearby, like in the phenomenon called density-dependent polyphenism. 
Besides radio protection from ultraviolet radiation, some fungal pathogens utilize melanin to aid in pathogenesis, as it mechanically strengthens cell architecture when penetrating plant cell walls, and can reduce the toxicity of defense compounds, peptides, and even reactive oxygen species. In recent spectroelectrochemical experiments, melanin has shown to have the capacity for the exchange of electrons with redox active species and may have signaling among other physiological functions. Melanin ghosts created by hydrolyzing cells were able to transduce a current in some experiments. The 2017 research report, Melanin, Radiation, and Energy Transduction in Fungi, coalesced much of the circumstantial evidence related to the potential for melanin-facilitated radiosynthesis and radiotrophy. In this section, Implications of Melanin-Mediated Energy Transduction, the authors state that irradiated melanin was able to reduce nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide to NAD plus hydrogen, thus providing a critical link for the conversion of electromagnetic energy into chemical energy that was immediately biologically useful. However, the analogy of radiosynthesis to photosynthesis is only partial, for the latter is understood to include a series of complex reactions that involve the fixing of carbon to synthesize new biologically useful molecules. For fungi, there are some suggestions that they can utilize CO2 for synthesizing organic molecules, but this topic has not been thoroughly explored. They go on to say in the section, Major Questions and Future Research Directions, that there is experimental evidence for some rather intriguing observations, particularly that melanin can interact with high-energy electromagnetic radiation and transduce it to chemical and electrical energy. In aggregate, these observations suggest that melanotic fungi have the capacity to utilize high-energy electromagnetic radiation to sustain some biological processes. This, combined with the possibility that fungi have some capacity to fix carbon, raises the possibility of radiosynthesis. However, we lack information about the detailed processes by which electromagnetic energy is harvested and converted into biologically useful energy. They also point out that experiments showing that electromagnetic radiation enhances growth have relied on measuring growth increments relative to non-irradiated conditions or albino mutant controls, rather than establishing an absolute requirement for growth, since the latter criterion has been experimentally difficult. Which is a legitimate criticism, as it is not sufficient to assert that radiosynthesis by melanized fungi, like dark septate endophytes, exists by only focusing on investigating the properties of melanin by itself and extrapolating that it must be the case, especially if we are eager for it to be true. As someone who world builds and writes fictional stories in their spare time, and is often inspired by biology and ecology work, I can empathize with how interesting it would be if this was shown to be true. Given that fungi are already known to make use of other kinds of heterotrophic metabolism and symbioses, and no carbon sequestration mechanism related to melanin energy capture has been found, investigations showing why it would not only be theoretically useful, but a critical physiological component for development would be convincing additional information. In the 2019 book, Fungi in Extreme Environments, Ecological Role, and Biotechnological Significance, there is a 10th chapter entitled Melanin as an Energy Transducer and a Radio Protector in Black Fungi, where the authors review the potential for radiosynthesis in the section Future Research Directions, stating, The key question yet to be solved is how melanin translates the electrochemical changes that occur in response to ionizing radiation into the biological changes in growth and survival in the organism. Is this due to the ability of melanin to mediate radiosynthesis, 
And if so, what is the mechanism and what pathways are involved? Adding that melanin could be positioned for an important role in cellular communication, if not outright radiosynthesis. Considering the corpus of work on the subject of melanin's wide physiological capabilities, it may be that its ability to accept and donate electrons plays a plausible signaling role. It would seem that while there is circumstantial evidence supporting its plausibility, there is no actual proof of dark septate endophytes or other melanized fungi with the capacity to sequester carbon this way and growing from energy and magnetic fields or acting as an antenna that picks up these energies and fuels environmental systems like John Kempf asserts in this video. I am not sure from what evidence Kempf supports these statements, but this was why I asked Matt Powers about this. Personally, I am very appreciative that Matt Powers created this video in the first place because the conversation that occurred downstream was an interesting point of edification. Both of us are passionate about the science of regenerative agriculture, and so it was really helpful to use that comment section as a crucible to find research that was helpful and verified and research that might be less so. And in that way, I think we all benefit by sharing this conversation in the regenerative agriculture space. If anyone has more research on the subject of radiosynthesis by fungi facilitated by melanin, as well as interesting information about human photosynthesis and, in general, plant health, I'd be very interested in reading about it, as I always am, and we can have an interesting conversation about that, too. Thank you for listening.